We've been lied to by liberal government prime ministers like Pierre Elliott Trudeau told us it was going to be decriminalized in 1970. Jean Christian said he was going to make it a fine. That was Mark Emery, Canada's Prince of Pot, earlier today, back in the country for less than 24 hours after serving more than four years in a U.S. prison and already vowing to make a difference in the next election. His burning issue? What he sees as the persecution of adults who use marijuana. It's not his first crusade. He's in short supply in the book trade these days. From his early days of running a bookshop in London, Ontario, Mark Emery has had a long career of taunting Canadian lawmakers. Celebrate your freedom! He started by selling banned books and music, then moved to Vancouver. Go Connects, go! And from his famed cannabis culture headquarters, did a lively business in pot seeds. He's been arrested and jailed many times over. He's also taken pot activism to new heights by starting the BC Marijuana Party. And so would you like a brochure for the BC Marijuana Party? Drop dead. I'll take that as a no vote. In 2005, Emery was arrested for selling seeds to U.S. customers. In 2010, he was extradited to Seattle, where he pled guilty and went to jail. Since then, two states have legalized the selling of marijuana, and the tide is turning in Canada. Yesterday, Emery was finally a free man. And as he made his way over the Canadian border in Windsor, Ontario, he pledged to continue his fight for the legalization of marijuana. We are going to bury this prohibition next year in this federal election coming up. We caught up with him earlier today in Toronto. How does it feel? Well, it feels wonderful, but it's also surprising how quickly the previous experience of four and a half years fades away into nothingness. You could have gone away for 20, 30 years. Right, 28 to 40 is what they first were seeking when they charged me in 2005. And would, would that have been worth it? Uh, you'd have to ask me after uh, 5 or 10 or 15, 20 years. I'd like to think I would think it's still worth it, but what a price to pay. I mean, that would be the rest of my life behind bars. But and why which is it worth it? Well, because it's an injustice that is so colossal and has been not corrected in 45 years. And we've been lied to by liberal government prime ministers like Pierre Elliott Trudeau told us it was going to be decriminalized in 1970. Jean Christian said he was going to make it a fine. Jack Layton came to my home and recorded a video promising to advocate for the cause, and he didn't. Uh, Pierre but why devote your life to that? Because two million people that are Canadian over 45 years that still goes on to this day that 25, 30, 40,000 people a year are convicted of, of marijuana crimes and to me legalization is all about there should be no punishment for any peaceful honest lifestyle. I mean I would look at Rosa Parks, she finally decided to stand up to an authority that was unjust and great things happened as a consequence of that and that's how so many bad laws were changed. I would refer to Henry Morgenthaler changed the way we look at the abortion laws in this country. In fact, had the Supreme Court strike them all down because he refused to obey the law. He persisted in breaking the law transparently, openly, and honestly. You compare yourself to Rosa Parks? I've never compared myself to any other activist, but I will tell you I've read extensively about Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and, and Mahatma Gandhi. You were selling illegal seeds. You were, you were yes, breaking the I law. Yes, but I boasted about it, and I also gave away all the money. The income tax department had a very intimate knowledge of my seed business, very intimate. They would follow and track my sales and were really grateful for all the taxes I was paying on it. So everybody was in on this. It wasn't like it was a secret and Canadian judges didn't want to give me any punishment. And that's why the federal government, under the Liberals, or even under Erwin Kotler, conspired with the DEA over three years to make sure I suffered a uniquely American punishment. You say conspired, you yes. think there was a conspiracy? Yes, because they could have charged me. The Canadian government was fully empowered to charge me in Canada if they so chose. But they also knew that no judge was going to put me in jail. No judge was going to take it seriously because it wasn't regarded as a serious problem or a crime in Canada. But they knew that the U.S. judicial system regarded it very seriously. And so they worked exclusively to have me shipped abroad to another foreign jurisdiction in the United States to have me prosecuted. And this is from a man who is the Liberal Justice Minister, a famed human rights activist, allegedly. Yeah, and, and allegedly you said on a blog that he was a Nazi Jew. I did call him that because I'm well versed in Jewish history. I've written a blog calling the Jewish culture the most greatest contributor to the advancement in humankind that we've ever seen on earth. Jewish but he's people, recognized as a great well, humanitarian. Is, yeah, You're he, calling him a Nazi. He's a uh, Jew. Yes, because while he was the justice minister, 
150,000 Canadians were charged with marijuana offenses. That doesn't seem like a civil rights activist to me. I spent three months in jail for passing one joint while he was justice minister. So that quote, is he a Nazi Jew or a Jewish Nazi, was my writings in my jail diary while I'm scrubbing floors because he is perpetuating a bad law that puts people in jail for three months for passing one joint. So people seem to be, oh, well, you were so mean to Erwin Kotler. That has to be contextualized. First of all, I apologize for that because I don't want Jewish people to think that I regard them in anything less than the highest esteem. In Canada now, all three parties are talking about change. How much change do you want to see? Do you want to see weed sold in corner stores? You know, I'm not fussy about how it's done. I'm just very specific about no one should be punished or go to jail for it. Do you think that it should be sold in stores like cigarettes are with rules? I think it should be sold in stores. Somebody's got to sell it and somebody's got to collect the taxes and somebody's But like in a corner store where kids can go and get it as as Well, why would the kids, Tories be, say can in their kids buy cigarettes in the corner store? Well, apparently they do find ways. Of course they do because and they find ways to get alcohol, but they're not legally allowed to buy it. So they're, the intent of your question is to apply a prejudice. I think that if the well, law it's, says Well, it's in the the conservative ads right now. That's right. the argument they're but making. But the conservatives right? are dishonest Machiavellian politicians intent on corrupting a legitimate debate. The Conservatives know prohibition is a failure and they know that Canadians don't buy into their arguments so then they start to deceive people and lie to people about what's really being discussed. You know, the Conservatives have reached a new nadir in political discourse. You vowed to seek vengeance on Stephen Harper. Well, political vengeance, and in a democracy that only means one thing, you want to see someone voted out of office. And to that degree, I'm going to work very hard to make sure he is voted out of office. I think he's a tyrant. I think he's very bad for the cannabis culture. I think he's very bad for Canadians. I think he's certainly served his, his due, if he thinks he's got a due. He certainly changed Canada a lot in his image, which I think... So how do you defeat him? Well, we make sure that the a lot of young people don't vote. It's up to me to inspire them to get out and vote. It's up to me to inspire them to get their friends to vote and their parents to vote and the people they work with. Do you I think see yourself as the guy who can bring down Stephen Harper? Absolutely. absolutely. Really? Me more than anyone else. I think, I think Justin Trudeau is the most electric and popular politician in a popular sense we've had, even more so than Jack Layton proved to be. Uh, I think he's probably the most popular politician we've had for 30 years. And Your I wife Jody is now seeking the nomination in right. a Vancouver riding, but they don't seem overly keen. Because they're nervous about what I might say, and that's a legitimate worry. And so, you, you so, think Justin Trudeau is the guy who can move absolutely, this forward? Absolutely, because legalization is a very specific word, and that's what he's promised. It means no one goes to jail for possessing or selling marijuana. But so you've, you've lied about smoking weed with him. You had to no, say... No, 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 I didn't. I made... You, I, you I said you'd smoke pot with him I on several occasions. I said I smoked occasions. four or five big gaggers. Gaggers is merely a large joint. But on the, on the afternoon when he was in my company, and as far as I recall, he was smoking marijuana with us, we smoked four or five joints. So it was not on four or five occasions. But it you've, was you've, one occasion. you've admitted to lying about that. No, no, I didn't. I, there was a misunderstanding. There's a video out there where it says, I smoked four or five big gaggers with him. And it made it look like there was four or five different lunches I'm smoking. No, that's not So it was four or five true. big gaggers all in a row that you smoked yeah, with Justin Yeah, and Trudeau. I can tell you who was with us. Uh, and he smoked four or five gaggers. I do not recall that. He, I recall him smoking marijuana at least on occasion with us. But you know what? I could have a flawed memory of that. You know, a lot of people after 11 years substitute what they think they saw as it. And, you know, for him, it's not going to be a special afternoon. He was in the company of two mutual friends of so ours. So does he really want your help in, in the next election? Well, he probably doesn't think he needs it, but he does. He, he, but because if I can bring 500,000 or a million voters to the polls to support him who might have voted for the NDP. Or a might million? Have not, really? Oh, yeah. Who might have, uh, might have not voted at all. That's the most important consideration. That's going to have an impact in 336 ridings. People are cynical that anything can be accomplished through politics. People have a very low opinion of politics. I think people will universally say I have more integrity than any federal politician that, that's currently in office today. Because even if you don't agree with me, you know I'm serious and sincere and back up everything I believe with the, with the risk that I would go to jail. I believe so strongly in this. There's no politician with that kind of credibility and that kind of integrity. They are not going to go to jail for anything, any of them. You'd go back to jail? Oh, absolutely. It's been really interesting to talk to you. Okay. Well, I, I certainly enjoy talking. It's nice to be a free man. One can be very effusive when one feels like a free man. <laughs> Thanks so much. You're welcome. We contacted Justin Trudeau's office today. A spokesman said the allegation that the Liberal leader smoked pot with Mark Emery has come up before. Trudeau has always denied it, and his office reiterated that today. Up next...